Hey everyone, welcome back to The Dental Wolf. So this is another video in our terminology series and today we're gonna to be talking about goodwill. So I'm actually kind of excited to talk about goodwill because it's an important concept in dentistry, especially when you're going through the acquisition process. And if you want to learn more about this, there's a really good podcast called NDP. It's a really great podcast. They talk about acquisitions and dental transitions, and they talk about goodwill actually quite a lot in some of the episodes. So I would encourage you to go listen to those. But just as a quick definition for goodwill, goodwill is basically value that a practice has over the value of the physical assets of that practice. So when you go to buy a practice, you're gonna be buying all the physical assets of that practice, the chairs, the drills, the office supplies, everything that has to do with that practice as a physical asset. But you're gonna be paying a lot more for that practice than just the physical assets. And there's two reasons for that. One, you're gonna be paying for the future cash flows of that practice. So that practice as an investment has value because it's offering future cash flows to the owner. And you're going to be paying for the goodwill of that practice. And so there are a few things that can add to goodwill. There's things like community trust in the doctor, the likability of the staff, the location that it's in. Location may already be represented in the assets if the building is included. Or it could even be the great public relations that they have with the community. Let's say that dental office has had a history of sponsoring the local baseball team for the last 20 years and everyone knows about the practice. That relationship with the public is something that you're going to be buying. It's it's considered an intangible asset of that practice. So why is goodwill so important to understand? Well, it's because it's a huge part of the purchase price. There's gonna be a lot of negotiations when you go to buy a practice over what the goodwill of that practice actually is. So typically when you go to buy a practice, you'll have someone go in and value the assets of that practice. So, you, you know, they might say the dental chairs are worth this much or whatever, but there's going to be a lot of leeway in the valuation of those assets and the purchase price. So you might buy a practice and you can say 50% of the purchase price I'm going to attribute to Goodwill. Or you could say, nah, actually the Goodwill is only really worth 20% of the purchase price that we're applying. Why would you want to attribute more or less to Goodwill as a buyer? Well, if you put more value on the goodwill of the practice, it really benefits the seller. The benefit to the seller is that they owe less taxes after the sell. Now, on the other hand, if you put more in the value of the assets, it's going to benefit the buyer. The reason behind that is because they can depreciate more of the value of the practice over time and offset their tax liability in the future. So that being said, it might be really tempting to try to convince the buyer as much as possible to attribute as much to the assets as you possibly can. But if there's one takeaway from this video, and this is one of the points that I really like that NDP makes, is that you should not kill the goodwill of the practice by trying to price gouge or out negotiate the seller when you go into a practice and you buy that practice you're buying the goodwill and if you go in and you beat the seller around all that goodwill that you're buying is gone and the reason for that is because you need the seller to think of you as a great dentist and he needs to have confidence in you and convey that confidence to his patient if not all that goodwill is lost that trust that they have with you is lost the staff may not like you because of what the selling doctor's opinion is of you. And you might lose that great public relationship that the practice has with the community. So the best strategy that you should take when looking to buy a practice is that you should be looking to pay a fair price to the seller. You're going to be making plenty of money as a dentist if you buy the right practice. So don't worry about paying a fair price to the seller. And we'll talk about what a fair price looks like when we go into valuations, but the seller should ultimately walk away happy. If the seller's griping the whole time after the sell and telling everyone how horrible of a person you are, that is not a good sell. Well, I hope this video was helpful in understanding goodwill. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to make, please leave those in the comment section down below or feel free to email us at dentalwolfonline at gmail.com. Thanks again and we'll see you on the next one.